Welcome to the QB Room. This is episode eight, 2023 season, and we have an awesome guest today, DJ Uyanga Lele from Oregon State, formerly Clemson Tiger, formerly a St. John Bosco Brave as the top recruit in the country. And Kyle, this was a blast. You've known him since he was in seventh grade. I've known him since he was a Seven. sophomore in high school. Haven't crossed paths a ton and was a blast getting into it. Uh, what were some of the highlights for you? Man, just who he is as a person, as a dude. You know, he's, his confidence is through the roof. And just talking ball with him. You don't, you know, we have college guys on here. We have a ton of NFL guys on here and talk ball. Obviously, you can relate to them. But to be able to re relate to a guy in college, talking coverages, protection, scheme, he's smart beyond his years. Um, I'm just impressed with him all around. Yeah, and then just leaving Clemson, going to Oregon State. Kind of everybody counted him out. I'm, I'm not going to say everybody counted Oregon State out. I don't know that everybody, anybody ever counted Oregon State in, and yet they are in the top 15 with a bunch of top 20 matchups in the next month for them and an opportunity for this season to go a lot of different directions, one of which to the top. And so between that, uh, we, we got into it with his brother. His brother is a five-star recruit who's at Oregon. They play each other in the Civil War in about a month. Uh, the highs, the lows his faith, who he is as a young man, and and uh, and a lot of deep football. So we hope you enjoy this episode as much as we did because we – I mean, you'll see at the end, we had a blast just talking ball with this guy and talking life. So uh, with no further ado, we'll jump into it. Yeah, bro, you've been balling out. You, you enjoying it up there in Oregon? I'm enjoying it, bro. Yeah, no, I like it out here, man. I like the coaching staff a lot. Coaching staff super Yeah. Cool. Uh, Coach Smith. Closer to home. Yeah, closer to home. My family gets to come to a lot more games. Um, my brother's down the street. That's probably the best part. My brother's down the street. I know. I, I saw something. Did your dad go to both the games? Is that what it was? Yeah. Same like I went, uh -huh, like I went to my brother's game after San Diego State. Uh, like Our game was at 12. My brother's game was at 5. So after my game, I got there like end of the second quarter. We got to see a little bit of him play. I just got to see him too. So it's, that's always nice. That's dope, man. That's mm -hmm. dope. All right, we're going to start off with a game. We're going to start yep. you off, kind of warm you up a little bit. You, you already seem warmed up, though. You seem pretty good right now. You're ready to go. But he looks warm. We're going to start off with a grown man game beard. called Clemson versus Corvallis here. Okay? Play this game okay. with everybody. You know, All right. It's like everyone knows Clemson and Corvallis. So you just, I thought you'd get locked in on this. So just compare each one. Both yep. very different places. You seem like you're thriving. You were thriving down in Clemson. You seem like you're thriving up there. So we're going to start off. First one, really easy. Who has the better coaches? Ooh, you guys going straight into nah, it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. We're just kidding. Okay. Yeah, we're not we're setting you up. Nah. That. That's fucked up. He's like, ooh, actually, uh, but this link isn't working anymore. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll be easy. Who's got Who's got the better food? Better food. Oh, dang, that's a tough one. Um, For me, I think Oregon State, maybe. I think because they have more options. Really? More options. Ooh. Now, if you're talking about, like, quality of stuff, Maybe Clemson. I mean, Southern hospitality is always good. They have good they have good food at Corvallis and Clemson, but I would probably say Corvallis just because there's more options. I'm kind of interrupting here, but did yeah. you ever go to – so I, I I spent a lot of time with Deshaun Watson at Clemson and a lot of time with Trevor Lawrence at Clemson, Clemson mm -hmm. and Cade now. I've been out there multiple times. There's a random hole-in-the-wall – I want to say it's either Chinese food. I think it's Chinese food that Ooh. Deshaun – and Ray Ray McLeod and Honey Express. And yes. <laughs> that you was really Honey good. Express. Hey, that was that was my it's not really buy anything. It's in a strip mall. No, yeah, it's in an empty strip mall. That's my favorite place. That was my favorite. I go there go. two times a week. That's funny. The chicken wings there. I know you don't want to get chicken yes. wings at a Chinese spot, but man, hey, the chicken wings that sounds fire. fire. Chicken wings at a Chinese spot. Yeah. It's fire. But they got some really good Chinese food there. That, that was my number one spot. I go there after games and for me, man, when you you go to Asian, you go to a Chinese restaurant and you got the kids working the front, that's how you know it's gonna be fire. For me, <laughs> kids working the register, I'm like, hey, that's where I want to be at right here. So that, uh, I, that express is fire, man. I love that place. I can't where's your spot up in uh, Corvallis, bro? Where's your spot up there? Man, there's another Chinese spot here. I'm a big Chinese food. Chinese. Chinese. I like I'm Chinese sorry. food. So there's another spot. Uh, it's an Asian market out here. It's called HK Asian Market. Uh, it's in the middle of, middle of the city, but then in the back, so it's, a, it's like an Asian food market, like a grocery store, almost small Asian market. But then in the back of the store, there's a restaurant, and it's like it's called Yummy Yummy. So it's a Chinese spot, but it's fire. Yeah, they give you you can sit down, eat in there too, or you can get it to go. 
Uh, but when you sit down to eat, they got unlimited rice. I mean, for me, mm. now, I like to eat rice, white rice. It's mm. something that I love. But they got great Chinese food there. So that's that's probably my favorite spot right now. You got me hungry right now. That sounds fire. Nice. All right. Um, we're going to go. Who's the better mascot, Benny the Beaver or the Clemson Tiger? Man, I have to go Benny the Beaver, man. Benny the Beaver, man. He yeah, does Clemson a lot. Tiger. Yeah, he does a yeah. lot, man. He's, Clemson he's, Tiger doesn't even have a name. I thought that was yeah, crazy. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah I, I that's. I mean, that's the other thing. Yeah, they don't really have a name for Clemson Tiger, but Bane Beaver, man, he's dope. He's hella dope. It's just some frat kid. Job. He probably is, man. <laughs> yeah, you ever think about that? It's just some fucking drunk it's frat kid in there, probably, yeah. just sweating his ass off all game. Yeah. Then you're putting up like sixty <laughs> points, and he's got to do push ups and back handsprings in there. That's what yeah. he's doing. Yeah, he probably lit too underneath too. Yeah, he definitely is. All right, last one. What's the better game day atmosphere? Clemson's got a pretty great one, but Oregon State, especially the way you got them going right now, looks pretty fun. Man, I would probably say uh, I wouldn't want to pick in between because both of those places are crazy. Like Clemson, mm-hmm. man. Obviously, I think Clemson, they have, they have more fans at the game. But Oregon State, man, gets really loud there. And I think at research, they do a really good job, especially with the new side of the stadium. Like when we play Utah, I, I play this jumping, rocking. I really like the chainsaw. Like on third downs or our defense is out there, mm-hmm. I think that's something that's super unique. It's crazy. All the fans love it. Uh, I think our student section at Oregon State is pretty mm-hmm. dope. But it's hard to compete against Clemson, man. You got the Tiger Walk. Stuff. You're coming down the hill and bus ride yeah. around. Like that was – that's once-in-a-lifetime experience. Like a lot of people don't ever get to experience that. And I was blessed to be able to play there and experience that and run down the hill. Like that's – that's I don't think – it's hard to beat that. Like you really can't beat yeah. that Clemson. It's super unique. So, Kyle, they have Howard's Rock at the top, and then they run yeah. down the hill. But there's that exact replica inside the facility. Yep. It's like a mini one. And you can, like, press a button, and it makes the noise and all that stuff. So, it's like they took it, and then they replicated it and made it mini. And so, I'm sure recruits love running down the hill or whatever when they come and yeah. see it for the first time. But no, Yeah, that's why DJ signed. Yeah. He just yeah. did a little I don't think he's like, being yes. politically correct saying both. I think it's like I, – and yeah. I called a game a few years ago when Jaden yeah. Daniels played at Oregon State against Jake Luton. Yeah, uh, for Fox, and so I've been up to Oregon State. It was a big game at the time, it was the end of the season, and I, uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. I don't think you're just playing both sides of it. They're both very unique, mm-hmm. very cool game day experiences. Yeah. I think that goes with a lot of places. Like you got, I think every stadium is unique. You know, like some mm-hmm. people might like this better, some people might like that, but like every place I feel like I play that has all been unique. And they all have something unique about them, something that's dope about them, and something that's different than anywhere else, any other stadium. Yeah, as long as you got like, especially Corvallis too, like small town, Mm -hmm. like people are showing up, the team's doing well. So even if you got Fairweather fans, like right now, people are coming. Yeah, I feel like those small towns is the best ones to be at. I agree. And you got like Washington State up there too. Pac-12. We're gonna get into the Pac-12 in a little bit. Disbanding, it's pretty fucking sad in my opinion. But Pac-12 has some in like some of the best venues in football, in my opinion. Uh, I want to switch gears quick. I want to see if you remember this. Do you remember when you and me met? Yeah, man, uh, Arizona, Coach uh, Coach Dennis. Mm-hmm. I, was like, I was talking to him the other day. I was talking to him like two days ago. Yeah, I definitely. Do you remember was. how old you were? Uh, I was. Let well, I me mean, Coach Dennis. I was probably my freshman year, maybe. I think you were in seventh grade when I met you. Was it seventh grade? And the only reason I remember it, and I was just telling Jordan the story before, is you were out there and you like you basically looked like you do right now in seventh grade. Now, you may not have all the facial hair, but you definitely had at least a mustache when you were twelve. <laughs> and you had this like mini peewee football mm-hmm. and your hands on the peewee football looked like my hands do on the mic right now. Like yeah. you're throwing like, like literally your hands were too big that you couldn't throw a spiral because your hands were too big. Yep. And I just remember you were dropping back. You were throwing like, you were going and throwing sessions and I'm like, all right, who's this kid? Let's see what he's got. And then you ripped like an 80 yard go route. And I'm like, I'm sitting there, I'm trying to do the math. I'm like, all right, seventh grade. I'm a junior in high school right now. I got five years on him. Okay, so I'm gonna have a little bit of a head start on him because I know damn well I'm never gonna be able to do any of that shit that he can do right now. <laughs> and then you just kept doing it and doing it, and doing it. I just wanted to see if you remember that because no, I, I, it's I, like a vivid memory in my yeah, brain. I remember now, yeah. Cause I'm trying to think of my man. I know Dennis a long time, so I'm like, man, what's yeah. I don't think, yeah, seventh grade. I remember. I know exactly what you're talking about because he had his son out there, Jordan. Mm-hmm. Now I remember that it was at the park. He used to go to the park and throw. Oh man, the cactus park with the grass yeah. is up to your ankles. Yeah, no. Was, yeah, that was really getting it out of the bud for us. I remember meeting your pops, and I don't yeah. know if we like met or it was the Chargers one, right? Those things at the Chargers. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Uh huh. Yeah, I remember the Chargers. Yeah, it was Chargers practice facility. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Okay, I yeah. forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you were next and up and coming and all that stuff. And then 
Rayon Mayel Mitchell, who was ahead mm -hmm. of you, you were a sophomore. He was a senior. He's the starter. He's got offers. And then he gets, you know, he came to some of my stuff that off season. And all of a sudden yep. I hear that Rayon got benched and I was like, did he play bad? They're like, no, the sophomore is a baller. And I was like, really? So I started watching you. Uh -huh. And then I went to your game versus JT Daniels at modern day. And yeah. I'm at the game. Uh -huh. I don't remember. Did you guys win that game? Hell no, man. Hey, we did. That team was <laughs> they were so JT good, was they were one of the best that high team they never, they never trailed one time all year, dude. That was, was, that was bananas. Yeah, that was our we were the best game they had that year, and we lost by I think 10 points, seven, 10 points. So I go, I'm at the game, and I'm sitting with JT's yeah. parents, mm -hmm. and and I catch like at this point in my life, I'm catching like one or two high school games a year. Now I catch yeah. five or six. Cause I take my son, my son's set. My oldest is seven. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, go to a game on Friday or whatever, yeah. but I go there. And so watching you play and mm -hmm. he rev had a couple just like crazy throws and I go to the bathroom at halftime and there's this long ass line and I get there and I get in and I go, I get out and I'm washing my hands and next to me is Jim Harbaugh. And he's wearing the same outfit that he wears every single day. He's got yeah. dockers on. Pants. <laughs> khaki pants got a michigan hat yeah and i've known jim forever and i'm like jim what's up and he's like hey sit with me in the second half so i go up and sit with him and whoever michigan coaches are with him he's like hey i like this dj kid i'm gonna offer him i think he offered you after the game yeah and, got, and, uh, I, and I just remember him watching the whole deal that's funny yeah. i didn't know that that's a crazy story yeah no that was that was my first game ever starting that was my first start in high school you first start was against modern day Damn. yeah man yeah that was that was tough yeah. only up from there yeah, only You're good. <laughs> yeah. So fast forward a little bit. So you have played in the ACC at a high level. You've played in the Pac-12 uh, at a high level. Um, is this year's Pac-12 and it, all of them, and some of the teams you haven't played yet, obviously, is this the level of competition, the level of ball, the level of everything, talent, uh, all that stuff, athleticism, is that better than any of the years that you played in the ACC? How would you kind of compare those two? Man, I think – I think the Pac-12 is different. I think, man, the issue in the Pac-12 is crazy. I think the level of quarterbacks, like the talent of quarterbacks in the Pac-12, I think it's better than all the years I played in the ACC for sure. I mean, from top to bottom, you look at it, like I think every team has a good quarterback and every team is elite. Or if they have a backup, that's elite too. I think that's one thing, like the level of talent and in, in the depth in the QB room is crazy. But, I mean, I haven't really played the whole season yet in the Pac-12 yet, so I couldn't. I couldn't really assess from like compared to the ACC. Like last year, the ACC was really good. I thought, I thought my junior year last year was the ACC was probably the best that mm -hmm. than I when I played there. Like from top to bottom, the teams were really good. They had good quarterbacks last year as well, Devin Leary and a bunch of other guys in the league with Jordan Travis. There's a lot of good quarterbacks, but I'd probably say maybe the Pac-12 if it shapes out the way we're going right now. I think the Pac-12 probably isn't that crazy on the year that the Pac-12 is going to be one of the the best conferences in football, the next year it's not going to be a conference at all. You're not in it for much longer. It's not really going to affect you. It might affect your brother, yeah. right? But uh, is that something you guys talk about a lot? I mean, not. I mean, you try not to talk about that stuff. I mean, it's always it's a question in the room. It's a question in the air, like, man, what's going to happen mm -hmm. after this year? I mean, I have no clue. I mean, I've heard the Tupac. I mean, Washington State and Oregon State is the only teams right Tupac. now. Well, I, didn't, I didn't hear it called that, the Tupac yeah. fire. I've heard, I've heard now I mean, we're playing in the Tupac. Yeah. Like, but That's I, I won't <laughs> deny it. Yeah. I'm a straight. <laughs> I have, no, I I have no clue. Like, we try not to talk about it. Um, like, Coach Smith, I mean, he says he doesn't – he has no clue. And, like, I don't think – like, I mean, I think the only people that know is probably, like, the administrative people, the AD. But, like, we don't really talk about it. All he says, man, is just, like, all we can control is this season, and every week we have one game. Like this week, we got UCLA. It's the only thing we got to worry about. Like, I mean, there's no point to worry about next year. And long we have is this year. Like the, tomorrow's not promised, man. Like to, tomorrow's not promised. We don't know. We could be here today and gone tomorrow. Like you have no clue. Uh, we want to talk about your head coach. Yeah, Jonathan Smith, your yeah. old head coach, Dabo. Yep. He had a lot of he had a lot of good sayings. And they called him the Daboisms as. And he'd be on TV a lot. I remember he said the last one he said was, "We've had NIL here, name, image, and, name, image, and likeness of Christ We're playing for the name, image, and likeness of Christ." The other day, and I was like, "That's not going to help you compete." Like I respect it, but that's tough. Yeah. Is there any um, sayings that your new coach has that rival Dabo's? Uh, nah, I probably wouldn't say, man. Coach Smith, man, he's he's hella chill. He's like a chill dude, man. Like. He's hella cool to talk to. Like I can go in his office and talk about whatever and just 
talk about whatever I want. Like, uh, but Dabble is totally different. Like he had hella sayings, hella sayings. Like, like you said, like Dabbleism. Like, uh, there was man, he, I could come off with stuff off the top of my head, just like different stuff he would say. But Coach Smith doesn't do. He's it's they're like two different coaches. Mm-hmm. So, like, Coach Smith, like uh, he has me. We have a team meeting like once a week, like two times a week, maybe. It's like ten minutes. He says we need to say we get out. Coach Sweeney, we would meet every day for like twenty to thirty minutes. And I think it's like they're just two different guys. Like Coach Smith likes to be in the background, likes to uh, doesn't really like to talk too much. Just lets the coaches handle everything with the players. Dabble's a lot more hands on and like more of like like he's more vocal, like the guy right here. But Coach Smith is vocal as well. But like they take two different approaches. So like I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Coach Smith doesn't really have any sayings like just like that. Well, I so I go way back with Coach Smith. I don't, and then I only know. Yeah. Well, I've talked to him about it because I, I mm-hmm. called a game there a few years ago. But he was a college counselor at the Elite Eleven uh-huh. when I was in seventh grade. Oh shoot! Ben Roethlisberger was a sophomore, right? David Carr was a junior, not uh-huh. Derek Carr. David Carr, yeah, was a junior, right? Number one pick, mm-hmm. and uh, and his receivers were Ocho Cinco and TJ Hushmanzada. Yeah, and so Chad Johnson and and and, uh, and TJ. So those are teammates of mine. I played with them at Cincy for four years. And so going through that, go back. And this is in San Juan Capistrano, like the second ever Elite 11. And and those are the counselors. A guy named Rohan Davey that you probably haven't heard that name. He was at LSU at the time. There's a handful of guys. And I remember my high school coach, Bob Johnson. I don't know if you remember Bob Johnson, but he was the Mission Viejo coach when you were little. And he Yeah, before uh, Chester's job, right? Yes. Yep. So, mm-hmm. you know, my I, I transferred there to play for Bob my senior year. Won, you know, whatever CIF. But sick. Congrats. They've won a bunch. No, no, yeah. they've won a bunch since then. He was a great coach. Right? Tight, he just tight, like tight. won a ton. Right. Sanchez. All these people came there. Anyway, yep. he he created the Elite Eleven with Brian Stump and Andy Bark and all the guys at Elite Eleven. And so he's going through that. And I remember so it was my coach who was basically training my brother and I. And I go. And he, and I wanted to throw because I was a little kid and I was catching balls. And I go, how yeah. come, you know, can I, can I throw? He goes, no, 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 no. We got high school kids, college guys, because this is a new concept, the Elite 11. Mm-hmm. It's a totally new concept. And he goes, no, you can't throw. And I was like, okay. And I remember <laughs> watching everybody throw. And I go, hey, coach, how come you're letting that guy throw? He goes, who? And I go, the guy with the black cleats <laughs> with the black hair. He goes, that guy? Because he's the starting quarterback at Oregon State. I literally, as a seventh grader, was like, how come that guy gets to throw it? I don't. Because this dude was like short, going bald, didn't look cool, was throwing ducks. And my my coach goes, you got to understand this for a second. This is one of the best college quarterbacks in the country. So that next year, I watched him just absolutely shred the Pac-10, not the Pac-12. Yeah, and it was just all time one of the most unassuming physical presence. It's why the way you're describing him as a coach right now, I'm like, huh. yeah, that makes total sense. He's not trying yeah. to make it about himself and put himself out there. He's just trying to get it done and figure out a way to do it better. Yeah, and no. so it's so funny because that's how he was as a player is very yeah, unimpressive wow. in person, very mm-hmm. productive. Yeah, no, that's that's I mean, that's an honest assessment of Coach Smith, man. Like you don't you don't really like a practice you wouldn't know, like from like hearing people talk, like he just in the background, like he's just off to the side, just watching, like kind of just like man, he's just like chilling. Like he not, he doesn't have a mic in his hand, saying stuff like things go bad. He just, he don't even say anything until the end of practice. Like he'll come out, I come up to you, say something during, like come up to me during practice, say something he liked or this or that. But besides that, man, he's just he lets all the coaches do all the work. I think that's something that's so dope. he's quiet, but he's mm-hmm. aggressive. Talk about the aggressive mentality. I think you said so oh, yeah. yourself. Uh-huh. You never punt in Madden. Right, yeah, you always no. go for it and all that stuff. Talk about like the how that has played out and come together. No, like they're big. Uh, they're big on the analytics here. Coach Smith, uh, all the offense guys, they're big on the analytics. Like man, like we got a whole chart on like when we're going for it and different stuff like that. But I like it a lot. I mean, being aggressive, I think that shows the confidence he has in us in offense, the quarterback, the players on offense, and we know when we get in the third down, like hey, third down and long, depending on like man, we only got to get half here. Like if we get half here, maybe a little bit, a little bit less than. To make it comfortable, depending on where we're at on the field, like we're going for it. Like fourth and one, if we're on the twenty, we're gonna go for it. On the other, on the on actually, the, actually on your own twenty, you're gonna go for it. Like yeah, I think Washington State, we're on the twenty-five thirty. We went for it. We didn't get it. What'd you call? Uh, you didn't get it. No, nah, I missed the throw. I missed it. I folded right there. That was a bad. Oh, we're throwing it on fourth and one. Usually yeah, that's like QB sneak time right there. 
Yeah, like, well, this week, I think we're on the 35, 40 against Cal. We went for it. QB Sneak got it. I mean, it was we're only up by, like, 12 in the fourth quarter, like 11 points in the fourth quarter with 12 minutes to go. So, I mean, a lot of teams are probably just going to punt it there. But, yeah, no, we go for it. We go for it a lot. I think we were 5-5 five for five and fourth down last game. And that's something he's big. He talked about, like, all the analytics. Like, we're going to go for it. We have four downs. We're going to use it all. Yeah, I analytics like is real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Analytics has made their way through the NFL heavy. Or you saw yeah. the the Chargers go for it at the end of the game two weeks straight. Yeah. Because of analytics. Mm-hmm. And it almost bit them in the ass. They went QB sneak out their own 25 with two yeah. minutes left in the game. And they fucking turned the ball over twice. So I have I have an interesting relationship with analytics. It yeah, I think. It me out sometimes, yes. man. But I think some people like it. Some people don't. Uh, but, I mean, at the end of the but, day, man, like Coach Smith, he's like, man, we're not going to play the game scared. We're going to go out there and be aggressive. We're going to play the game to win. We're not going to play the game to lose. And that's what I like. And he's got – yeah, he's got confidence. That just shows he's got confidence in his quarterback yeah, at the end of the day. That's yeah, like teams, the aren't, teams aren't – they're not focusing on analytics if they don't got a guy back there that they can trust. So, I think yeah. when t- when you go for that, like we had Baker on here a couple weeks ago, and at the end of the game on mm-hmm. third down and four-minute situations, they're letting him throw the rock. Like yeah. that means they got confidence in you. So – that shows the confidence. And I remember I was talking to AJ, AJ Vaynerchuk, who's an agent that me and you share. Um, yeah, AJ's man. the man, by the way. Yeah, Love man. AJ. Yeah, AJ's man. awesome. Uh, AJ. Great great choice, man. AJ's he's, awesome. Uh, he's great. But I remember talking to AJ when you were looking to transfer last year. Mm-hmm. Just curious. Me and AJ talk about random stuff all the time. And I was like, where's he thinking of going? And he said, Oregon State. And I was like, Oregon State? It's so random. And then he was like, no, it's going to be great. you got to look into the coach, look into the, the scheme. It's going to really set him up for the NFL. And you've come out and said that you feel like being in this offense and being around this coach uh-huh. has furthered your your mental abilities in the game. Can you talk kind of on what you've learned this year in the system and how it's changed your way of how you look at football? Yeah, no, definitely. I think for me, man, when I put my name in the portal, I was going for it. I wanted to go somewhere more pro style. I think I've said it a bunch. I want to go somewhere more NFL style, kind of like the Niners, what all the NFL teams are doing with LaFleur. You got Shanahan, all the different guys, McVay, like the Rams. And I feel like that's just the type of offense I wanted to play in. Something for me, I played in spread since high school to college in like more of like RPO systems. I haven't been under center since maybe youth football or really run like a real NFL offense where you got a long wristband, you got a wristband call, and it's you got different alerts, different checks getting two play calls and you're checking it at the line, making alerts, bring receivers in for the blocking scheme in a run game. And for me, that's somewhere I wanted to do. It's something I want to get more familiar with. And that's where I want to be able to grow my football knowledge and be able to show people in the NFL I can do this. Yeah, do you feel like you're you're getting closer to or seeing a bigger part of the, the, the game? Because you only know, this is true in life, but true in quarterback, you only know what you're exposed to. 100%. Right? So yeah. I do draft training every year. I've been doing it for like 15 years. And so like, there's a really, I've had really smart guys that played in really simple systems. And so you get them on the whiteboard and you talk and they don't sound that smart when really it's like, no, it's not that they're not that smart. They haven't been exposed to very good football. And then I've got guys who are not, not as smart as others, but they've been exposed to really good ball and they crush it on the board. And you're like, you can think they're smarter than they are. And then ironically, Oregon state, Sean Mannion is probably, he's one of the smartest guys I've ever been in a room with, Yep. but was exposed to like the highest levels of complicated football with yep. uh, Coach Riley back in the day. So he sets out differently. And then I've had some guys that, you know, not super sharp and haven't been exposed, right? So you said get across the board. Yep. You played with Coach Coach Streeter, I was offensive coordinator at Clemson. I, mm-hmm. you know, I, I did Trevor's draft prep and I did Deshaun's draft prep. And so, you know, there's, I think there's a, there was a, there was a gap that needed to be made up in terms of understanding the complexities of NFL offenses. Mm -hmm. So that's what you've been exposed to now getting exposed to this. Do you feel like with just talking about what's happened moving forward, not backwards, do you feel like you've been exposed to more ball and more stuff that is it opened up your mind a little bit in terms of how you can attack things and how you can protect things? Uh huh. No, I think definitely. Yeah. I think from what we're doing at Clemson, it was totally different. We're doing Oregon state. I think you hit it on the nail. I mean, like you said, like when you're exposed to different stuff and this offense is totally different than what I was doing at Clemson. And like, I'm exposed to a lot more. I've learned a lot in my time here and just being here 10 months now, almost a year. I've learned more football than I have in a long time. And it's been great because it's a new offense that I haven't learned in my whole life. It's just different. Like from the run checks that we do to the run to the pass game to the different stuff. Like there's a lot more we look at in a different pass game concept to the play action. Like we're running mm-hmm. a little bit 
hand up play action here off hard run game, half roll. I mean, you got like different stuff. I mean, I have probably 15, 20 different play actions that we do, which marries everything into the run pass concept. Every run game, like every run, run play we have, we marry it with a pass concept and the play action also with a naked boot. And it's just totally different. It's something that I wasn't used to, that I wasn't exposed to. Then now that I've gotten here, it's been, for me, it's been awesome. Like, this is the stuff. I mean, for me, I love football. I love ball. I love talking ball. Like, this is something I want to do for a long period of time in my life that I can do forever. But this has been something dope that I love to see and just love to learn, man. Like, I'm a sponge. I want to learn as much as I can. And being here at Oregon State with Coach Langer, Coach Smith, uh, Coach Boyer, there's been a lot of great coaching staff here that I've learned from here. So it's been great. Well, I got some clients that are in their late 20s, early 30s. So don't change that for sure because that's uh, that's potentially the most important piece of playing quarterback for a long time sir yes, loving it and want to learn mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, as soon as you think you, you have it all figured out it's about when somebody uh you know jogs in the huddle and you jog out um let's shift gears here for a second let's talk about your brother man i uh my brother's five years older than me um you know i grew up he was my idol i always looked up to him and then i got a chance to back him up for four years and play with him and do all that stuff so your brother committed three days um before your you know, you declare that you're going to go to Oregon State. You know, Mateo, did that play a role? He's a – so for those of you who don't know, he was a five-star recruit, defensive end. I saw him catch a couple of balls, too, at tight end. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just your younger brother being a baller and not being in DJ's shadow, you know, I think that was heavy for my brother was just yeah. how big the shadow was. Mateo created his own path. Did that play any role? And, I mean, how cool is that watching your little brother do his thing? I mean, I mean, for me, man, I love my brother. That's my best friend. I mean, we talk all the time. I love that guy. Uh, he's an unbelievable football player, baller, great. He's a great producer as well, does music. But uh, for him, I mean, my, by the way, I told yeah. the guys that I was like, "Hey, Young Concrete, man, he has beats. Clear. I don't know if he has bars, but he has beats." <sighs> Yeah. And I'm just going to put this out there. We need a beat from Young Concrete to close this episode out. We're going to have to get that. In yeah, send him a, have him send us a beat. Yeah, I need a oh, heater. Well. But sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, but for Mattel, man, um, the one thing cool, uh, like the cool part about when I put my name in the portal, I was like, I was, I was back home for the most part, like for the whole month of December. And for Mattel, he didn't commit till signing day, so I got to be there and be with him, like for all the in-home official visits, like the in-home visits. So I was there for mm, that's dope. Days, like. I was there for Oregon, Ohio State, and USC. That was just three schools that he was choosing from at the end. And so I got to be there and talk with the coaches and every single one of them and ask them questions that I had for them, like certain questions like this stuff. I mean, I've been I've been in college football, you guys. So, that is so valuable. you see through the fluff. I mean, like I wanted to ask them uh -huh. about personnel. Like, hey, what do you guys see in him? What do you see him doing in three years? Like, what is your personnel? Like, what do you want to do? Like, do you want to make him outside backer? Like, you want him drop in different stuff? You want to play four eye? Like, yeah, he's 265, 270 right now, but he can move. So, do you plan on moving him to a four eye, maybe a three tech, or you don't want him to be able to drop in the zone, be an outside linebacker, like kind of like the two four, kind of like the hybrids they're doing right now? So, mm -hmm. that was pretty cool, stuff like that. But, um, like, I got to sit down, like, when he made his decision to Oregon, it didn't really have a, like a, uh, effect on where I wanted to go and, and it was like he asked me where am I going at the same time and we got to watch film together and he asked me like what do you want to see like this is what I want to do in college like this is where I want to go but it wasn't like a choice like oh I was going to go to Oregon State and he was going to go to Oregon and make it close together or he was going to go to SC or whatever it was like he made his decision and I made mine yeah just a benefit well you guys are going to play each other right Civil War yeah. that's what it's called yeah Civil War yes, sir right at the end um, you know, I, I mentioned my brother got to play with him and never got to play against him. He's older. He's a lot better, too. But never got to play against him. You guys are literally going to play against each other, right? Like, yeah. he could sack you. He could pick you off. Yeah. You could stiff arm him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, for real. you can rip a dig for 60 as he pops you in the face. Like, have you thought about it? Have you talked about it? Yeah. Have you, like, that's got to be incredible. No, I mean, we've talked about it, I guess, like when people bring it up. I mean, but me and Mattel, we haven't really talked about it. Um, I mean, I hasn't really like come to a thought. I mean, yeah, once the week comes, I'm like, yeah, I'm actually gonna play against my brother. I've only played with him, like you said, you've only played with your brother. Uh, for me, we're three years apart, so it's never like we played. We only played on the same. We only played on the same team once in high school, and he was the tight end. 
and I got to throw one ball to him. But besides that, like, we never really played against each other. So it's going to be crazy when it happens. And then we could be on the other side and be looking at him like, damn, that's my brother right there. So it's, it's going to be Bro, you're literally going to be five yards away from him yeah, I know. when he's out there on the field. And it's not, it's not even going to be like he's back there playing safety. Yeah, And no. that's probably the only time you'll ever get to play against him. you got bragging rights for the rest of your life right there. I know. So it's going it's to be something to cherish, man. I'm, I'm excited for that. Um, I want to move on to – talk tv shows here you were part of qb1 when you were in high school right but i want i want you to take us through that because you weren't originally supposed to be on the show right it was a guy in front of you yeah it was a guy in front of me yeah real uh-huh yeah so you ended up playing over him and then what happens do you just they just hey dj do you want to be in the show now since you're the starter and they move on and they start going with you how'd that happen yeah honestly man i hated it i didn't like i mean i don't i don't like the cameras and stuff like that like it was it was a cool experience but man like those i mean like the reality tv shows like the guys are like this like with the camera right there i'm like man like I almost feels like i'm gonna go to the restroom they go follow me in the restroom i'm like hey like <laughs> chill out real quick hey, but yo. <laughs> I, mean, I don't like that i like the cameras like all on me like doing watching me everything i do on like camera right behind my ear like i got a microphone above my ear on the sidelines of the game like a, I'm like oh shoot like, hey I'm like it's it's just different but it kind of it happened weird like that season happened and then it kind of just like they had cameras on him but then they also had cameras on me in the game because like they filmed the whole weird. rest of the season yeah but, like QB one like the season ends I think like that modern day game my first game starting like that's where it cuts off so but oh, that was like game six seven like we played six more games after that. So it was like there was they never ended up. They always told me they're gonna run like a spinoff for like the next six games of that in QB one because they followed me for the rest, like they like for the rest of the season, all the way leading up to the CIF championship. But they never released that stuff. But it was it was it was definitely an experience, uh, it was something that I didn't like too much. It was it was it was it was a cool blessing. It was a blessing to be a part of it. But for me, man, I don't, I don't really like all the cameras like that. I'd rather just be chill, lay back, just hang out with the family and stuff. Yeah, you're so young too. Like we see what happened to Spencer Rattler during the show. You know, like I'm sure Spencer. I grew up. He's an Arizona kid, so I grew up yeah. knowing about Spencer and hearing about him. And I'm sure he's grown up in a long, a lot since his sophomore year of high school compared to where he is in, in college now. And you're catching you at a weird time. Yeah, it's just it's a tough it's a tough time to take advantage of a kid too. You know, yeah, no. Nothing, you you probably handled it well, but there's not a lot of kids that would. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, they asked me. They wanted me to do it my senior year. I was like, man, I like, nah, I'm okay. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with not doing it. But yeah, because they do it for all your senior year. Like the quarterbacks on there is for senior year. So it was, it was crazy. It was a crazy, it was a crazy, crazy to be a part. As of. you know from playing in college, high school is as pure as it gets, and it's getting less yeah. pure, obviously, with money and all the stuff. But like, you mm-hmm. gotta keep that. <laughs> you gotta keep that. Yeah, no. Awesome with mm-hmm. my boys, with a bunch of kids yeah. who are never gonna play football again. Yeah, you gotta keep it that way. Uh, let's talk about highs and lows for a second. So. Um, I've always believed that, you know, how good a quarterback is, and this is true in life too, but how good a quarterback is, is how well you handle the highs and the lows, the inevitability of success and adversity. And that can mean a lot of different things. I don't know if you know this, but like the, the, my logo, the little mountain range, that's all that is high, low, high, low, high, low. There's that's your- what it means. Right. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's, oh. yeah. it's a summit. It's just up, down, up, down, up. Yeah. Down. I haven't seen this one yet. Everything went perfect. Yeah. And then they got uh, all the money at the end. Man, I, I haven't seen that. it. Don't plan on it. Yep. And so you are five-star recruit, number one guy, all the stuff, successor to Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence was number one since day one, as Adidas put it, right? And all that stuff. And you go there, you have up and down years, um, some some high highs and some low lows. Yeah. Um, if I remember correctly, you went in when he got sick with COVID and lit up Notre Dame, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Right? So then all of a sudden that creates unrealistic expectations, right? Yeah. And so you go in and you live through that. Now you go to Oregon State. You guys are rolling, right? You got a top 15 ranking with a bunch of big games. The crazy thing about right now, this side note about Pac-12, yeah. is like all you guys have like four or five big games coming up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Utah oh, yeah. has five big ones. I talked to yeah. Bo Nix the other day. He's got five big – like everybody has four or five games. This could go a lot of different directions. Oh, you know what okay. I mean? Mm-hmm. Caleb's only played two, one or two good teams so far, right? And yeah. so relevant ranked teams. And so um, you 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 got it rolling, right? Like how much more positioned are you to handle this? Like how much have you grown up? Like what are the key takeaways? What have you learned? Like you've been through a lot in a short amount of time with a lot of football ahead of you. Talk a little bit about that. 
Yeah, no, I think for me, man, my time in college has been, yeah, I think, like you said, there's been some really good times and then there's some really bad times. But I feel like, man, for the most part, man, it's been it's been a blessing. Like, man, each and every day, I feel like God is the path that he wants for me, man. I'm trying to follow on the road that he wants for me each and every single day I can and try to live out my best for him, for his glory and everything he's done for me. But there's been, yeah, there's been some times where it's been great. There's been some times where it hasn't been too good. It's been like, dang, I'm like, for me, man, I feel like I've grown up a lot and I've grown a lot of my faith as mo in the most part and just leaning on my faith in Jesus Christ, my heavenly Lord and Savior, like leaning on him, man, and giving him all my problems and different stuff, praying, talking about different stuff with tight knit family that I have, like a small circle that I believe in. I feel like that's helped me out a lot, like kind of shortening up your circle, people that you believe and talk to and like not listen to the outside noise. I know Coach Sweeney said that a lot, but that's, that's that's really true, man. And I think like if you think about, you look at Twitter, look at too much stuff, like it's going to all get into your head. It's just not going to help. But I feel like over the times I've been in college, man, I've, I've learned a lot, like how to deal with the pressure, like how to deal with different stuff, how to deal with adversity. Like for me, man, in high school, I never have any adversity. Like, um, mm -hmm. like yeah, I lost a game to modern day in the CIA championship. Like, that's really nothing like in a, in a big sense of where like losing a game at Clemson, all of a sudden you start two and two and it's like the world's coming to an end and it's crazy. And it's like on a big magnified uh, system where it's like, man, it's right there on ESPN. Everyone's talking about it. Like, like you're not playing good. DJ is not the one needs to get benched or different stuff like that. And for me, man, I think I look at it as a blessing. I, I got to go through something that a lot of people to go through and I've come out on the other side and come out of it a winner, come out of it a better person. And I learned from that, and I feel like God's helped me along the way. Without him, man, I wouldn't be in the spot I am today. Yeah, and just talking about your faith, man, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. So having a lot of success early and and that the up and down not hitting until you went to college, not yeah. because college has been bad, you've had a great career, Yeah. just because high school was so smooth. Mm -hmm. um, like, how has – like? How have you learned through the adversity? Like, how has your faith been strengthened through your adversity? And and if there's anybody or any quote or any scripture that's like helped, you know, unearth that and strengthen that for you? For me, man, I met uh, Clemson. I met a I met a guy, a pastor. His name is Dan Leanne. Uh, one of my one of my best friends to this day. A guy that texts me all the time. I talk to him on the phone a lot, and I still keep in contact with him. But he's a guy that's helped me throughout throughout my times at Clemson and just with my faith, man, you know, for me, uh, I've always been a believer, always been a believer in Jesus Christ, my heavenly Lord Savior. But he was a guy that just, he talked, he's friends with Trevor and a lot of guys at Clemson. He was just a guy there for everybody. And he's just a cool dude, man. Like, and he, he helped me with my faith and just helping me see a different side. Like, man, I'm not defined by football, you know, I'm a bigger person than that. Like the football doesn't define me as a person. Like, it doesn't define me if I win or lose. Like, Jesus doesn't love, love me even more if I win this game or if I lose this game. Like, he loves me because I'm, I'm, I'm he created me and I'm the son of him, son of God. So just different stuff like that that's helped me along the way. That's amazing. And in a way you said it, like, it, you know, it's a blessing to go through it. Kind of what I said earlier about the highs and lows and managing those things. I mean, personally, for what I do, the other job and helping quarterbacks, it's, it's hoping you understand that, like, when you go through a hard time, that's actually a rep. It's actually mm -hmm. a rep, mm -hmm. right? And when you are having success, sure, feel yourself and get excited about it, but that's a rep. How are yeah. you going to handle that? How are you going to be able – the only people that sustain success over a long period of time are people who know how to handle success, Yeah. right? Just because they give you a bunch of money doesn't mean you're going to have a bunch down the road. you got to learn how to have money, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's the same happen. thing with success. I think it's yeah. the same thing with faith. Um, so with that, we had Jared Goff on a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and Jared Goff. He's the number one pick. He goes to the Rams. He goes to the Super Bowl his third or fourth year. He signs a big contract extension. And then they go, nah, we'll take Stafford. Yeah. We're going to move you from L.A. to Detroit, right? So I brought this up in pre-production because I couldn't help but think, like, everybody's so excited about you coming there. And then and my nephew who went to Clemson would be like, I saw DJ at, a, at an event, right? So everyone's so excited about you coming there, all that stuff. And then you have the, the two seasons there. And then they got another kid because the big schools always have another kid, right? I mean, that's the yep. whole point. Right? Uh -huh. um, and they move on. And Jared Goff has gone to Detroit and found a new home. And a, and a like it was it was amazing. Like, if you're going to watch yep. one of our episodes, by the way, mm -hmm. one complete episode, I yep. would say watch Goff's for Goff? this reason. 
Yes. It was like three weeks ago for yeah. this reason, because dude, they straight up booted him out of there. Yeah, not yeah. what you experienced, not what you experienced. I'm talking about booted him out of there. The people who picked him booted him. The fans, the fans have no part of it. Yeah. The GM and head coach booted it, traded him. Right. That's different than the fan base. Cause none of us really care. You know what I mean? What, what yeah. the people think GM head coach. No, you care. And he's playing the best ball of his career on top. One of the best teams in the NFC. You know what I mean? Like it's just all it come together. He's lighting it up. He's lighting it up, but he's just like when you watch the episode, you'd be like, "Man, he seems like he's in a really good place right now, like yeah. emotionally, spiritually, yeah. physically, geographically, right?" Yep. Not not the same thing, but they go to Cade Klubnik, and you go to from Clemson to Oregon State. Talk about that transition, and maybe some of the lows, some of the hard times, yeah. some of the you know the mirror you had to look in. How has that process gone for you? I mean, man, yeah, I feel like. Like for me, man, it's been a fr- breath of fresh air. Um, I feel like that's the kind of way to describe it. For me, going from Clemson to Oregon State uh, has been like a new start, almost like somewhere I can redefine my journey. Uh, I can share my testimony and then what I've gone through college and then what I'm doing now at Oregon State. It's been dope. Like to go somewhere where it's kind of like I said, like a fresh start. Like the coaches are here, like, hey, man, just come in here, compete. Just go to work and do what you want. Like people that have come in here and believe in me. It's been nice, man. It's been it's been cool. Kind of like I mean, I can't I don't know Jared Goff's story like we just talked about, but it's been it's been nice, man. Like to come here to a different place. It's smaller, not as much going on here as Clemson, where like Clemson's all in the media. Like it's I mean, Clemson's a huge program uh compared to like a lot of places. Like it's one of those big programs. But for here, Oregon State, it's been nice, man. To come in somewhere, be a breath um, breath of fresh air, to learn and just put my head down and work. Like it's it's been it's been super dope. If I were to ask a teammate who was your boy at Clemson and a teammate who's your boy at Oregon State to compare you, has anything changed? Has anything evolved? Has anything grown? Have yeah. you stopped doing something? Have you started doing something? Um, Maybe. I feel like for the most part, I don't know. Maybe not. I feel like I've been the same guy since high school. I mean, that's how I see myself. But maybe now I feel like maybe I'm a little bit more mature or maybe I act a little bit differently. Um but I, I couldn't really tell. For me, man, I feel like I'm the same person since I've been in high school. And I try to level myself out and just be even keeled, cool, calm, collected, and just, and just go to work each and every day, man, just try to work my tail off. But I, I'm, I probably have changed since I've been in college. I mean, I think life experiences, you change each and every year. I feel like maybe, I don't know, if I feel like last year I was a different person and this year and different stuff. But overall, like not too much, I don't think. If that makes sense. That's kind of confusing. Yeah. Maybe. No, no, you're good. Yeah, we talked about um, your coach earlier, and you were, I've been thinking about this because I think it's just two very different spaces you've been in with Clemson and Oregon State. We talked about, you know, Dabo, who's just – he's up there, and, and that's his style of coaching, and then your coach here is kind of letting you guys do your thing. And I think about it in my career, the times where I've thrived is where coaches have kind of stayed back, right, and let you take ownership of what it is and let you take ownership of your offense, your reads, your players, and let you figure it out and then make up your mistakes. And then, and then it's a collaborative effort at the end of the day, but you got to figure it out on your own and make your mistakes and learn from them. And I feel like from just listening to you talk, man, you sound like an incredibly confident dude. You sound like you're at a good point in your career, like Jordan was saying about Jared Goff. And yeah. then you mix that with a coach at Oregon state who seems like he's letting you take ownership and control of the offense. Do you, do you see it the same way I see it to where this is, yeah. this is my offense now and I'm taking control yeah. of it. And the guys on the offense are taking control of it. Yeah, no, I agree. I totally hit it. I think you hit it right there on the nail. Like, Coach Smith does a really good job in instilling confidence, and along with all the other coaches on our staff, not just me, but all the other players on the offense, from the offensive line to the receivers to the running backs. Like, they let us go out there and play. You know, they they be there. They're also they're going to coach us hard and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, man, they're letting us go out there and play. They make let us make the mistakes. It's not the end of the world if I miss a pass or if I make a mistake. You go back and learn from it. It's all like a process-oriented driven offense where, like, man, we're going to learn from the mistake, continue to keep growing, keep working. Like, obviously, we don't want to make that same mistake twice. But you just go in there, like, I'm going to push you to get better each and every day. But it's not where, like, I'm going to be over your shoulders hounding you all the time. Like, man, we're just going to let you go out there and play and make the mistakes and do 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 good at practice. And then we'll just learn from it after practice. So it's been, it's been nice, man. It's been, like, it's been it's, it's been it's been a, it's relieving huh real relieving man it's been dope yeah you take talk about a breath of fresh air you get out there and go do your thing 
Yeah. I like it. Well, we're gonna, we got some plays for you. We, we do this segment with all of our guests. We call it Teach Tape. We're going to bring up a couple of plays. Yeah. And you you said you like talking ball. Let's get nerdy on ball. We like to yeah, get real nerdy that. on ball. I want you, since this is an NFL system, yeah. we've got a couple of plays from game against Cal and game against Utah. Yep. Take us through. But before it, before you start this, this is our producer, before you start this, I have a just the hypothetical scenario for you. Mm-hmm. just want to get your take on it. So oh, that is a good play right here. You got a uh, good play. Yeah. But before this, this has nothing to do with this play. I just want to get your take on what you do. Yeah. There's uh there's 38 seconds left in the game. Uh-huh. Um, you have the ball. The other team has no timeouts. Uh, you gotta, um, are, you, are you taking a knee or are you going to run the ball? I already know you're going with it. You, you got to go victory, man. And clock management. You got to go victory, right? That was victory, crazy, man. I mean, the end of the day, you talk, oh. already, you're talking about the Miami game? Yes. I just had to bring it up. Yeah, no, that, that was wild. Um, I ended up watching, like, the highlights on YouTube because my girlfriend's dad, Big Mike, he was telling me, like, man, you got to watch that game, like, how it ended. Because it was during – I mean, obviously, I couldn't get to get, watch the game because we played. So, I ended up watching it. I was like, damn, like, that's heartbreaking. But shout out to Georgia Tech, man, making, like, man, capitalizing on the opportunity, man, and winning the game. That was that was dope. Yeah, that was man, unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, we talk about – And just do it like your coach said, right? Just milk the clock a little bit. Right? <laughs> yeah, just milk, milk the, the clock. clock. That's all you got to do. <laughs> All right, so we got this first play, right? Uh, just take us through it. Give me give me your read, protection. You're saying you're in the NFL offense right now, so all yeah. these things you're thinking of pre-snap. Give me your pre-snap thoughts and then what's going on in the play. Yeah, we got seal protection here. So we got the tight end coming back, slicing back, trying to sell like outside zone here um, off of it. Uh, we're in a pistol formation here. Um, so it should be dock right. That's what we call it. Um, but tight end slicing back, trying to – it's called our seal protection. But then faking a screen here. Uh, ran it a lot, seen it on film. Want to be able to have like a change up in, like to make sure to keep the defense honest. Like if we doing screens, like this, like a regular tunnel screen here. You set him up good. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was really good. My thirteen. I appreciate it. Yeah, he did a really good job. Ji did a good job selling the DB. Worked it all week in practice. Feel like we got the look uh, right when we called the play. Looked out there. We had the perfect look for it, and we capitalized on it. So it was perfect. You're going from him. Do you have a check down? Are you checking that down to the guy that, that – uh... Yeah, so, yeah, progression. We're going J.I. right here on the – I guess uh, I guess you would call it like a, I guess like a slot fade, like selling selling the screen right here. J.I., DB takes him. Like, they don't fall for it. Maybe you could check it down to Ant if you have pressure. So, off the, like, if you have Niners pressure, if you have Nickel Sam coming off hot. And usually, if you have two, like for here, like seal protection, we get two off that field right there. Then we're hot. You know we're hot. Uh, or two off the backside, say we get cap blitz from the backside, then we know we're hot here. But this protection, we're covered up. Six-man protection should be good here, but then we have a throwback on the backside of the play. So if we don't like J.I., then we can go to our second progression and work the throwback to sideball on the backside, to the back pile on here. Yeah, this isn't a protection you want to live in right here. Look at what happens when your tight end goes back and that backer adds yeah. on. You just get that ball off. Yeah, exactly. This is – see, this is like – this yeah, was my get a number pre- three on that. <laughs> no, we're, we're getting a number one and a one a that's about it. We used yeah. to run this protection all the time in Carolina, my first two years. And it looks great on paper, right? You're selling mm-hmm. split zone. Yeah. Packers are going to get up. And then we get a guy like we had like, I thought it was Greg Olson who was blocking. I remember we had one. It was our trick play. It was on the ball play. I forgot what we called it. We on the ball on the ball. We ran this protection and we were going to throw like a fake back around to our F receiver. And he's going to, and I was going to dump it. Bro, your tight end, sometimes your tight end gets picked off by those guys coming back, oh, right? Yeah. Sometimes he Yeah. It's what's really tough is like so the tackle, they gotta sell it inside zone, like you're talking about you gotta sell split zone. So if that DN right there, if you pause it, that DN doesn't cross his face, he doesn't have him. So the tight end's gotta pick him up. But if the DN crashes and really sells that, and the tight the tackle can end up picking him up. But if he stays up the field like that, the tight end's gotta take him and then the green the linebacker green dogs off it. A will like the Mike Green Dogs off of it, then it's like, man, you're screwed. So you gotta get the ball out now. So that's the tough part. Like you're talking about, it's tough on with that protection. Like they're good. the DN is not sliding too hard and playing the inside zone like that. The tight end's gotta take him. So that's what we're making off that with that protection that he's gonna slant hard. The tackles will be able to collect him with the backside arm, and then be able the tight end could be able to pick up that will, or if we have a Niners pressure there. That's why uh, when we get our our call sheets on Saturday and we go, all right, what are you? You know, if you got to go in the game, which one, what plays do you like? I, I'm crossing out this protection nine out of ten times, unless it's yeah. like a pop. Bro. I'm like, don't no, don't call this shit, please. Yeah. And don't call it for Josh either. That was a good play. All right, let's go to this next one, Jake. If you can pull it up. All right, take us through this one. Yeah, no, this is uh, it should be out of should be out our doubles or a tight end attached right here. So it should be Doc 
what we call it. And then it's just it's a simple simple player, simple drop back. Um, you got you got we got we call it a Tony route. I guess it'd be a stick route for a lot of people. You either hook it to the boundary, you have a go route on the outside, the side bow. Tight end has a stick route. Either can sit versus man, he's breaking out zone. He's sitting in that zone. And then on the back side, we have a bridge route. Depending on the coverage, two high, one high, two high. Uh, he's able to split the safeties right there under the sham over the mic. Um, he got two high. He's going to work off that field safety there. He's going to end up working a dig there. And on the back side to where I hit Ant, he's running a 15 yard dig. So this is a straight pure progression. You're starting front side, working all the way across. Uh huh. Yeah. The only guy that has the option, this ran out of 12. So. That tight end to the field, he has an option one high, two high, and then man, man, he's going to keep, he's going to stair step it, working across the field there, two high. Depending on where that safety's at, he's going to, he's running that route off that free safety to the field, and he's going to run in a dig, or he's going to be bending it if it's covered too. Do you ever find it tough when you're going through progressions like this, when you're starting with a quick game progression to the right? So let's look at your footwork here, right? It's a quick game to the right. Then you got an over route, which is kind of intermediate, and then you got a deep dig coming back. Do you ever find it tough with your footwork to kind of bounce back, bounce back? I know Jordan Wee used to work on this. He used to call this the breeze pop drill. This is what Drew Reese used to do. But to be able to pop from one to two to three and keep your base and just rip a backside dig? Yeah, no. We talk about it all the time. I think the one thing I like here is that we talk about all the scenarios for each play. Like we go through the footwork and talk about, like, man, if you get this coverage here, like most likely – if you get one high, most likely that bridge is going to be good here because the whole there's not going to be a whole defender. Most likely you're going to get five. So if you get five, if you get a five man blitz, five man pressure here, and you're going to be able to have it over the middle because there'll be no low hole defender because he's going to he's going to have to end up taking the back right here. He's going to have to take a six. What that backer does right here in the video. So like the footwork wise, it should time up, but like sometimes like you get into that dig, you're going to have to take a step back depending on it because I mean, he repping a 15 yard dig, it's usually punch three for us. Like that's the timing doing a reach so you're going to end up having taken like that i guess you're talking about like the breeze really like taking a little hitch step back just to time it up a little bit better toughest things i see this in the, in the league i know philly does it a couple teams i used to hate it as a player is combo footwork where if it's like one high we're going right two high we're going left but one high is quick game to the right yeah two highs three and a hitch to the left so it's not what you just showed right there which is start quick game and then by the time you get backside to the dig which is technically number four in this progression you're ready it's choosing on your first step which one to do. Yeah, you guys have any of that? That's tough. But we we do have like kind. Uh, I mean, you have like alerts. So like, say you want to rip like a ten yard out. Alert. Yeah, I, yeah. I, alerts. Alerts different, yeah. different, but like we don't really have too much of like okay, one high here, you got to work quick game, and then two high here, like oh, you're gonna have to go punch three. We don't have too much of that for the most part. And that was heavy in the league for a long time, and it was just hard, mm -hmm. right? Because it's not like coverage declares at the snap what it's going to uh, be i mean they can sit there and hang for two steps right and so it's really about eight nine years ago it evolved into this so this is pretty new this is new in the last decade where we're actually going to start have a quick game answer and go across and the other thing too is like dbs they're reading our footwork and gun right so oh, if you yeah. just shuffle back they're going to settle their feet and get ready to drive on the ball if you start crossing over with that left foot they're going to stay in their pedal and so this kind of got that just history of football or offense, this kind of got the same reaction out of the defense and made them not, it, it kept them from uh, being able to just watch your footwork sure. uh, and determine their drop. Uh, but you still get that combo. I mean, like you got, mm -hmm. you could have thrown this as your right foot hit the ground to a stick. But instead you're hitting a 16 yard dig inside that hash. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so uh, with the same exact footwork. So I love that you guys are doing this. You're the perfect quarterback to it. I, I mean, literally since sitting with Jim Harbaugh at your game sophomore year in high school, you've always played with a great base. You've never been a guy that, like, your feet got together, your feet got out of whack. So this is, a, I mean, just a great system, and, and this is a great thing to ask you to do as a quarterback because you are already set up to have success at it. So it makes a lot of sense why this is working for you guys. Appreciate it, Jordan. It's interesting to hear you talk about coverages so much in college because I remember when I was back at A&M, uh -huh. And this is the difference in systems. You know, I played Cliff Kingsbury's offense in college, which is essentially yeah. the old Texas Tech. And I couldn't tell you what a coverage was to save my life. Like when we're drawing up stuff on the board, like when you draw up defenses on the board, coaches draw up, yeah, okay, the strong safety plays here, the will pushes out, yeah. and it's their covered three because they play three. Like when yeah. we were drawing up shit on the board, it was the five linemen, and then it was 
tackle, 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 tackle just for X's. D linemen. <laughs> and it was, no, it was just B's for backers. All the backers were B's. Yeah, B's. Yeah. Yeah. And so I didn't like, until I got to the NFL, I didn't like, they were like Sam, Mike. I was like, eh. Yeah, so, I don't know. Somewhere. You have to draft your right. yeah. yeah, exactly. Until I learned the 1984 <laughs> Bears offense. Yeah, fucking hey. <laughs> that helped a lot. And then also we just, it might have been this way for you at Clemson, but yeah. we were just reading leverage. I was never reading coverages, really. Maybe you were you were reading coverages at Clemson, but it yeah, was we all of like coverage. leverage. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, also, I mean, for the most part, yeah, we're reading coverages. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Coverages where you go work, um, like one high, two high. Yeah. That's interesting. It's cool to hear you talk about coverages, though, man, because like you can tell you care about it. Like the way you talk about your protections, too. Like you know your slide protection probably better than I did, right there. You talk about your tackle collecting the end over there, and dude, dude the game has evolved so much at the college level. I would just say it's this, unbelievable. Like, there's a bunch of when it comes to protections and coverages. When I say coverages, I don't mean Madden, like two guys deep, five guys. I mean like yeah, leverage, yeah. understanding his role and responsibility. Yeah, He's like Nico's right? supposed to be inside leverage versus quarters here or outside leverage like hey, he's gonna play yes. a game with you but the safety is 12 yards deep one yard inside most likely he's gonna be in the quarters here and then from the film like if he's in the post safety here then you got that sam tucked in you might get that two tilt here with a corner press yeah, it's different stuff mm. from the film mm. that you learn but i mean I, for me keep going he's got I, bars I, kyle yeah I, keep going i'm not yeah <laughs> our coaches here man they've done a great job like coach boy coach linger they've done a really good job and it started when i first got sounds here. like they do like the one thing i loved when i got here in january like, I was like, man, when I got here, like, man, let me get a playbook. Like, let me, let me, where's the plays? Let me learn the offense. Like, but they took the first two months, two and a half months, and we just went over every single coverage from what we're going to see from each team in the Pac-12 to every single thing. Like, just the little details. I feel like I was a, uh -huh. like, I was like a defense coordinator. We talked about every little detail from the fronts to the backers to the secondary and each and every, their little bit of job. Like, so for me, that's helped me out a lot. I, I would feel like I was good with coverages until – I got here and it just really exploded. Like we were talking about, you're exposed to a lot when you get exposed to more, you learn more. I was exposed to more when I got here and coverages and different stuff. So I got to learn a lot more. And for me, that was that was probably the coolest thing that's happened to me since I've been here is like learning and really sitting down and talking coverage and talking ball and stuff like that. Isn't it crazy? Like you can, you can have a lot of success when it comes to coverages and protections. You can have a lot of success in college at any level, right? The, the SEC, whatever, like you, you can have a lot of success in college, not completely understanding the integrity of a protection and the responsibilities of the defenders on defense. But you cannot have success in the NFL. Guaranteed. Oh, yeah. If you don't have those two things. Yeah. You can actually not, like I've had a lot of guys for draft prep who are like, don't know a ton about that. Yeah. National champion Heisman. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. but you cannot do that in the league. And, to be honest, and Kyle knows this, like for draft prep, the first thing we do is learn every single defender's responsibility in every single coverage. Yeah. Like that Sam linebacker in cover two does not have hook to curl. No. Hook to curl is not a thing. It's not an area. Yeah. Like what? He's just going to put his hands up when he goes there? No. He's got inside leverage, outside gap run support, hands on number two, funneling him outside, sinking, collecting with his eyes in the backfield. So we try and learn yeah. what's this guy's actual job in every single coverage yeah. before we start learning how to attack those things. So, dude, I am. It makes a ton of sense why you jumped in the portal and hopped into Oregon State and are happy as can be because, dude, I, I you could have got you could have been trying to learn that in draft prep, yeah, maybe you know what I mean. And yeah. it's like learning it in a meeting is different than learning it by playing too. So like you are going to be you just advanced three years in one year in terms of your exposure to the game. That's awesome, man. I appreciate. Um, that. We could go on forever. Uh, yeah. We're going to wrap this thing up and get into um, two little things we like to do here. So yeah. first off, we're going to do the two minute drill. All right, we do this with all of our guests, okay? all of our roomies. You're a roomie now. Congrats, DJ. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, we're going to throw a clock on here. It's going to be two minutes. And we want to hear your journey, man. We're going to yeah. hit my, mute on our end. Okay. Um, you can start it wherever you want to start it. First grade, ninth grade, whatever. But it ends today. Yeah. And so for two minutes, tell us about your journey, the highs, the lows, what you've learned, who played a role on the field, off the field. Uh, we'll throw it on you. Yeah. And uh, and we'll start the timer. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably start my journey off. We'll start. Uh, I'll start in high school. So uh, for me, man, I went to San John Bosco. Uh, I'm a Bosco Brave, live and die Brave. My high school experience there had two office coordinators, Chad Johnson, unbelievable guy. Loved him as an office coordinator. Learned a lot from him. Had Coach Lowe my last two years. Great guy. Learned a lot from him as well. 
I feel like they're, for me, they kickstart, kickstarted my offenses, my football career. Ran wing T back in youth football. Didn't know, I didn't, never ran spread till I got to high school. So for me, I learned a lot from those two. Uh, they ended up going to Clemson. An unbelievable experience at Clemson. Love Coach Sweeney, love Coach Streeter. Loved all my coaches there, Coach Elliott, to all the guys there. Love my teammates. Uh, for me, man, I, w- I met my wonderful girlfriend out there, uh, my rock, my baby, Ava Pritchard. So for me, that was an unbelievable time there and had a great career. I felt like at Clemson, learned a lot, did a lot. And then leading up after that, I'm um, right here now at Oregon State here in Corvallis. Uh, for me, man, it's been a blessing. It's been a breath of fresh air. Um, it's been an unbelievable journey just from my testimony for while I was at Clemson, different things I went through from the highs to the lows to the relationships I've made at Clemson, to the people I met, to just uh, everything in life, man. Like, for me, man, I feel like my life has been a true blessing. Like, for me, there hasn't been a lot of lows in my life where I look at, like, man, I was, like, a bad time. Like, for me, man, it's been, like, I try to look at everything in my life as a blessing. Like, everything in my life happens for a reason, and I'm a firm believer in that, that God has a plan for everything in my life that he does. Like, I, this doesn't, it's not a coincidence. This is just happening. But this is all of a plan that God has for me. And each and every day I live my life uh, trying to be able to live it to the best of my ability and the fullest of my ability. Give everything I have for my heavenly Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, each and every day. So I feel like each and every day I wake up, I just thank God that he's given me another day to live, to go out there and just live my best abilities for him. So that's how I look at my life. I love it, man. That was powerful. I appreciate it. Is that your that favorite great, one, Kyle? Man. I'm getting ready to say that was one of my favorites or my favorite. I mean, it's awesome. I just think like just from talking to you and I haven't seen you in forever, man. I just yeah, man. see you on TV, but like it's it's incredible to see how sure of yourself you are, like how confident you are and, and how you're at like such a great point to where, you know, like you're not just saying stuff to say it, like you're saying it with conviction. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you know who you are, like you mm-hmm. know the player you are, you know the person you are. More important, like more important than anything, you know the person you are, you yeah. know. And I think mm-hmm. just whatever that confidence that's been instilled in you over the last couple of years, and whatever you had to go through, like I'm a firm believer, and Jordan is too. Just talking about journeys that you got to go through some shit, whatever it is, oh, to yeah. figure out who you are and to figure out what you're made of, you know. Yeah, and it, yeah. it's all relative, you know. Yeah. So yeah, like you know, nah, man, that, that was man, it's, yeah, like you don't you don't really know who you are until you're thrown in that fire, like. Don't. You know, same thing in the game. Like, if you're not put in to the pressure moments, like, you never really know who you are as, like, a real player. I feel like that's what a lot mm-hmm. of coaching for a lot of people that coach people, like, man, how, you, how is this player looking? Like, in the scouting department, like, man, how is he playing in two minutes? How is he playing when the game's on the line? Stuff like that. So, for me in life, it hasn't always been like that for the most part. It hasn't always been like that. But for me, from like the life experiences I've been through my last couple of years and to where I'm at, my faith, and who I am as known, who I know, as, who I know myself as as a person, it's it's been it's been life changing. I feel like just over the past times, like I wouldn't say it's always been like that. Like for me in the last two years, it hasn't always been like that. Or it's like kind of a, like just speaking for people that like, like man, like oh, DJ might feel like this every day. Like he's been like this the whole life. Nah, like this is something where it's been for me, man. My faith is exploding and it's taken. I feel like it's grown so much through adversity and hard times to where it's big, making me a better person on the other side. So just the people that have that feel like, nah, this is just how he is. Like, nah, it's been, there's definitely some rough times I had to come out of the fire on the other side and I've come out of a better person. Yeah, man. Changes your perspective the next time you have hard times too, right? Because you're more welcoming to these things as a challenge and a rep. And you've always looked way more mature than your age, right? You've always looked older than you are, but dude, an hour into this thing, you are much more mature than you even look, man. So I appreciate that. Man. Um, Thank that's you, amazing. Man. Uh, last thing we're going to do here is we always wrap it up with just talking about what we're grateful for. So yeah. this is a moment of gratitude. So, yeah. um, we'll start it off with you right now. Yeah. You know, what does today, Monday, right? Like, like yeah, Monday. what are you grateful for, man? What's on your mind? Shoot. Uh, Monday today, man, I'm grateful. Uh, for, I'll probably say my family, my mom, my dad, my brother, my beautiful girlfriend uh, that lives here with me. Just thank you for all the loved ones in my life, man. Uh, I have a great group of family, great people that I love, that I'm thankful for, that helped me throughout my life. For me, man, it's, I got a the village ways. For me, I got a lot of people that help me, that raised me. Uh, it takes a village. Uh, I'm a firm believer in that. I have a lot of people in my life that helped me raise me to the person I am today. But I'll probably say I'm just thankful for my family, man. Thankful to be a beaver. Thank for Coach Smith. He's given me the opportunity to be able to play here at Oregon State. 
uh, thank you for my brothers on the team that have trusted in me. Man, I just want to be the best teammate for them. But most importantly, man, I'm just thankful that God's given me the opportunity to wake up today. I got opened up my That's eyes great. today. Um, got the, I got the walk today. I got the smell. I'm able to talk. I think just the little things, man. I'm thankful for those little things today. Mm. Kyle, what about you? Thankful for that Chinese spot, too. Oh, uh, always. You to go ahead later today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, okay today. Uh, for me, man, I'm going to keep it on the same page. I'm, I'm thankful for family. I just got back from London last night. Yep. Well, really, this morning I got back at like 2 a.m., but um, we played a game in London. My dad got to go. My sister got to go. It was the first time my sister's ever been to one of my NFL games in six years. The first one she got oh. to go to ended up being in London. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, my, my fiance was there. Her parents were there. I'm just thankful for family. We were just sitting down and talking about it today. Um, it's incredible how well our families get along together, me and my fiance. And I was totally off topic, yeah. but I feel like it's something I'm grateful for is you hear a lot of people who, who don't get along with their in-laws mm. yeah. and that's just from a personal standpoint and our families yeah. are just so close and it's cool to see them all get together in London to come watch me play a game that I didn't even play in. So thankful for that. Man, that's dope, man. Man, I'm grateful for this role I get to kind of play in this whole little quarterback role, watching it go around and bigger role for some, smaller role for others, and then just a spectator at some point. But DJ, man, I haven't I met you when you were a sophomore in high school, seen you a little here and there, yeah. never really worked with you. You're not like you're a client, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and then just like, and then here we are, and I'm listening to you talk the way you're talking and in the position that you're in right now and the maturity and the faith and like all these things. I'm just, I, I'm grateful that sometimes I'm just a spectator watching guys on their journey, but I get to continue to kind of be in the middle of it and one way or another connected. I'm just grateful for that. Cause it's just been a blast talking to you for an hour, man. Yeah. This has been great. Appreciate you guys having me on the show, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate that.